Good afternoon. You don't throw yourself at men for sex, but uh, this is dating advice for women. Dating, excuse me, dating advice for women. Let's try that clearly. Um, episode number 671, in case you're tracking my broadcasts. Um, before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, and we can get started into this fun topic. <laughs> my name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, helping strong and otherwise challenged women um, <laughs> said that'd be weird. Create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I do what I do and why I help all these women. And also why I do these talks every day, which I haven't done now for over two years, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my Facebook page. It then goes on to YouTube and I'll give you all those links at the back end. So I'll give you that as a thing to look forward to, if you want to look forward to that. And so today we are now episode 671. And the topic today is basically about um, how do women work with men in terms of dating and relationship. The title's a bit more long-winded, but I wanted to at least give you that bottom line to give you some, some inspiration from there. So, I'm just sitting where, to, I'm just considering where to begin because there's, there's so much to unpack from this that I'm going, if I start there, then I'll go here. If I start, yeah, bear with me as I figure this one out as I go. So let's just, let's just jump in. Um, the dating scene has changed a lot over the last mm, 10, 15 years probably. Well, no, let's say 10 years because it was really after the smartphones came out. So when the dating apps appeared on the smartphones, which wasn't long after the phones came out, so that was maybe eight years ago, there was a distinct um, shift in the dating formats. Up until that point, the most um, anonymous way that somebody could get a date would be through a dating site. And even then, I mean, there were pictures and descriptions and everything else, and Match was kind of the king of the hill at the time. Um, but then when the dating apps came out, which was, again, I think probably about three years after the phones came out, so the smartphones came out in 2007 with the first iPhone. Dating apps must have hit by 2010, I'm guessing. Now, you may know better than me the history. I didn't do the tracking of when these apps first got launched, but Tinder and all the other apps showed up pretty soon, not too long afterwards, people figured out, oh, everyone's got a smartphone, let's do this dating mobile versus on a website. What's it got to do with anything? Well, what, it got, what it has to do with anything is that once the dating apps came out, it changed the playing field. It also changed the, um, <laughs> the selection criteria, shall we put it that way. Because of apps like Tinder and other, and other sites like that, sorry, so the apps like that, not sites, it became very easy to hook up with a potential partner. And for men, that was extremely convenient. I mean, I don't, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think most of these apps were designed by men, except I think Bumble was created by a woman. So men were basically like getting set up to help themselves to get quick dates, fast dates, quick sex, and all that sort of stuff, without any concern. And so Tinder was the, was the model for that. Women were somewhat challenged in this arena because they ended up having to act like men, and this was about this competitive thing for a while now, but women had to basically act like men to play in the same arena. You either become a target or you become a hunter. That was kind of the mindset that was going through the dating apps. Ooh, that could be a whole other discussion. Hunter or target? Yeah, okay, <laughs> staying on track. So the dating apps have changed the playing field. And dating nowadays has changed a lot because 15 years ago, there was still a sense of, <laughs> I was gonna say cordiality maybe, in terms of the fact that men would at least to a small degree, court women. But now everything's all texting, are you up? You know, uh, get together and sexting. It's a lot less effort being put into this, which is one of my pet peeves, by the way. So dating has become an interesting culture and women have had some, I would say, challenging times to adapt to the new format. Because again, most of the stuff that was set up, the dating apps and all the, the texting, is really for the shorthand that men are very convenient, oh, sorry, men are very happy about most of the time. Most men are like, oh, I can just do text a few words and get what I want, sure. I'm gonna happen swipe right, even better. So for a lot of women, the hallmark romance, the model of ideal relationship and fairy tale love got blown out the window. And that's unfortunate in my book. Now, of course, some women are going like, I don't care about that anymore, I'm just gonna dive right in, so what? Be careful about that. In the title, I talked about how women throw themselves at men, and it is kind of that blatant in the dating apps because so many women have had to compete to be more visible than other women for a man to swipe right on them. 
And it is leading away from the getting to know somebody and know what they're about and their qualities and emotional connection versus how, sh how hot do they look. It's funny, I was talking to a friend last night about Tinder and, I, and it reminded me in a lot of ways of the old, there was a website that came out right before Tinder did. There was the Are You um, um, Hot or Not? Which I think actually is the people that created Tinder, if I'm not mistaken. And so the reality of the dating apps is based upon a quick visual fix. So ladies, if you don't look hot and sexy, you won't get swiped, you probably won't get swiped on, which is unfortunate because the dating apps are not built for women, generally speaking, except Bumble, I know. I think it's Bumble. <laughs> One of those apps is built for that. But see, my point about this is a much bigger picture than just the dating apps. Meeting somebody, getting to know them, before you jump into bed, what a concept is a rare thing nowadays. And for me, there's a certain element missing because the challenge is, well, I can go down the whole path about sexual bonding and, and, and um, um, oh, what's the word? Um, oxytocin and all the chemical stuff that happens when you get in sex, where women get really bonded to men that they just slept with and they met on some app two days ago. It's not healthy. So first of all, ladies, I would really recommend well, no, actually, let me just, before I get to that, I don't want to start recommending stuff yet because you may know better than I do, so I've got to be careful how I say that. My invitation to you, I'll put it that way, is really to start looking at what is your dating presentation? Meaning, and I don't mean this from the point of view, how do you put your profile together, but what is, the, what is the focus you're putting out in the world when you're looking for dates? Are you on the dating apps? Because that might work and it might not work depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking just to have someone to have sex with, they work really well from what I've heard. I don't do them myself that that much let me be let me be on transparent about that but the thing is the apps that I play on are really about getting to know somebody before that happens and it really is building rapport building connection building possibility before there's any risk of chemical reaction <laughs> so to speak so dating for women is challenging because it's not a most conducive environment for the feminine to receive from the masculine and I've talked about before about the courtship framing which I might drop in here too we'll see how that fits but I'm really clear that there is a need for something different and if you are I mean I, I yeah I would say I would recommend not being on tinder that much but if you're gonna be on those sort of apps be very aware that what a man be looking for may, may not be what you want to provide right off the bat so first of all don't bow to pressure don't give up the good so to speak because some guy swiped on you and you realize that you might lose him if you don't have him in bed not true and if it is a guy you lose uh, if you don't take in a bed he's not the one you want to be with anyway let me be clear about that for most women out there sex is not the main driver yes there are, no, there are women out there friends i know friends of mine i know who uh, sex is the main driver but i'm saying for most women it's secondary and unfortunately women have been losing um i want to say the battle but the opportunity to have their hearts won by a man yes a man should win her woman's heart. That's the, that's the romantic model, so to speak. But it means that she actually cares about him and loves him before she wants to get humped by him. Yeah, I'm being blunt intentionally. And that's unfortunately what we have lost touch with. And I feel like we, I want to be part of, the <laughs> part of the movement to restore that again, which is where courtship becomes front and center, where men actually take women seriously. Yes, seriously. As in worthy of being courted and... Um, I we'll say chase, but that's not what kind of, chased in the sense of romantically chased, not chased down the street, if you know what I mean, just to be clear. So my point about this is really how women have more power. Oh, this is a big point, by the way. Hmm. Ladies, <laughs> you have a lot more power than you realize in the sense that you have the ability to say no far more often than you probably do. If, especially if you're on the dating apps and you're being, uh, being swiped on a lot. So remember that you have the power to say no. That's one of the biggest things about dating. At the same time, you also have the ability to say not yet. And it sounds silly to say it that way, but what I'm really clear about is a lot of women have been coerced by the culture as well as by men to say yes to things that they don't want to say yet, didn't want to say yes to right up front. And so, as I said, some men are like, let's go, wham, bang, thank you, man. They want to get in and get done, get out. And if you're, if you're looking for that, great. But for most women, they're not. So be willing to say not yet, be willing to say no, be willing to say that's not for me. By having the authority which you have and owning your choices which you can, 
you can make a different choice for your romantic love life that can be much healthier, more long, more established and much cleaner and much more authentic. Part of their journey I know for quite a lot of women is they, they're focusing on the need for something. They're driven by desperation almost because they really want love and they want to find a man, which I understand and I appreciate their feeling. But sometimes it's driven from a lack of self-love. And I'm going to plug this again because I do it all the time because it's basically what I recommend. But so many women are looking out there to be filled up. And I talked about this um, yesterday or the day before about that need to be filled from outside that doesn't work. So if you're on the dating apps or the dating sites looking for love and hoping that someone's going to find you and take care of you and make you feel better and everything else, you may be going about it the wrong way. Loving yourself first, self-love as I call it, which is you know obviously the same, the same term, is a key process, a key practice, a key method to be in a place where you don't need that guy. The biggest thing you can do for your own love life, excuse me, excuse me, is not to need the guy that's asking after you. When you don't need him, you can choose him. Because when you need him, you have no choice. And he's like, he's, in, he's happy as a clam. But if you don't need him, one, he's got to work harder, which is a good thing, because it means he's, if his heart's in the right place, you'll know that. And secondly, when you are not needing him, you can walk away. And that is what real dating mastery is about. As strange as it sounds, dating success is, the, is having the ability, the confidence, and the ease to say no and walk away. Because a lot of women don't do that until it's too late or until it's too uncomfortable. So I'm very clear that it, from, from my clients and for women I know who might be watching this, making that choice to be caring for yourself, choosing for yourself, and be willing to walk away when it's right is absolutely fundamental. And as I said, the self-love piece is a large part of what a women really can practice more and more so that you are more um, confident in who you are, you're not needing love from outside because you feel that from inside. Self-love is a key tool, by the way. And also that when you choose relationships, you're choosing at a higher standard because the love you have for yourself raises your own standards for what you choose outside. This is my um, mission, <laughs> so to speak, which is have every woman I know love themselves so much that they choose a much higher quality of relationship. And they also choose to love themselves more fully so they will not settle for love from the wrong person. Being single is sometimes healthier than being in a bad, well, no, excuse me, always. Hmm. Being single is always better than being in a bad relationship. Some women and some men think that being in a relationship is better than being single, regardless how bad the relationship is. I absolutely disagree. It's healthier to be single and loving yourself fully than to be in a relationship where you're not being loved at all. I hope that's clear. Hi, Karen. Yes to self-love, creating higher relationship standards. Yes, I, thank you. Two thumbs up from me. <laughs> I absolutely agree with you, yes. That's why I offer the self-love practice. On, and I'll put the link in the comments so you can check it out for yourself. But it's the reason why I keep promoting it and pushing it and telling you to do it. Whether you get my self-love practice, the meditation practice, or not, if you do it for yourself, as long as you are remembering to love yourself first, your choices in dating and relationship will be raised. Your, your, your standards will be raised. And I'm all about you having better standards for your dating life, for choosing healthier relationships, and for loving yourself first. There was a, a, ground rule, a ground rule I learned in a seminar back in 80, in the mid 80s, I'll put it that way, that it took me about 10 years to figure out what it really meant, because I didn't get it at the time. It was, so, it was so easy, but it was so difficult. And that ground rule was, take care of yourself first, so you can then get to take care of somebody else. Oh, no, excuse me, take care of yourself first, so you can then take care of others. It was just others. It was meant in the, in the confines of the seminar, and it was a great teaching for us not to go beyond our boundaries and to do things for other people first is actually do things for ourselves first before we do things for other people because then we learned one how to come from an overflow fill up first then overflow two how to not be codependent it was a fun, it was such a simple teaching but it was a great powerful teaching at the same time it took me and i've been learning again and again layers of that understanding because when you when you take that that mantra so to speak of take care of yourself first so you can then take care of others to heart as a way of living your life it changes everything. And self-love is one of the things I talk about because when you learn to take care of yourself first, you love yourself first. When you love yourself first, you don't need love from somebody else to make yourself feel okay. The bonus is when you get love by somebody else, it's additive what you already have. It makes your love much higher, more fuller, more joyful, more fulfilled. 
that. Everybody can do that. deal with that. So this is a reminder that when you're out dating, take care of yourself to the point of saying no when you don't need it to really say yes and to postpone things when you know it's not good to do it now, whatever that is, whatever that it is. For most of them it's sex, but just don't have you think about that because the thing is dating for me is not just about meeting somebody going for sex and be done with it. It's about exploring some, exploring a possible relationship with somebody to get to know if I want to be with them long term. If that's how you approach it, why would you want to rush? You've got plenty of time. So focus on what's real and what's present and focus on loving yourself first so that you choose from a higher place. When you choose from a higher place, you get a higher quality relationship. It kind of goes hand in hand. I think I've hammered this point home enough. I'll put a link in the comments for the self-love practice so you can check it out. It's two guided meditations, audio meditations with my voice. Calmer than this, um, as well as a written guide as, to go with it. Um, hey, Michelle, let's see you. Yes, you got to catch up. I'm, this is number 671. I've got quite a few under my belt by now. So I'm glad to see you in broadcast and definitely check them out. I've done some good ones, especially um, check out 10 days ago. That would be around 660... I think it was 663, 64, somewhere in there about women running the world. You might like what I was talking about then. So definitely go back and check those out. There's, a, there's, there's a, a, an expansion of my message, not a shift, but an expansion of my message. So yeah, so it's good to see you as well. So quick recap. This is my Facebook Live that I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. You're welcome, Karen. Thanks for watching and thanks for participating. Um, by the way, if, anybody, if you want to share this with anybody you know or tag anybody in this broadcast, please feel free to do so. It might just help them get what they want. Um, and if you have any questions or thoughts, comments, put them below the broadcast, either here or on YouTube, either way, and I'll respond when I sign off. And speaking of that, um, live on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the replays go onto my business page, which is Barry Selby the author, as well as on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. Hi, Griselle. Nice to see you. Thanks for watching. And thank you for the, the thanks for thanks. <laughs> um, YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, which may be an easy place to find my broadcast because you because Facebook, there's a lot of other stuff that gets in the way. But anyway, business page where you can find my replays and on my YouTube channel. Um, questions, comments below, and I'll respond when I sign off. And again, check out the self-love practice. It might just be the thing that shifts your love life, as strange as that might sound. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow at the same time, same channel. And the uh, question for you is how much more can you love yourself? That's your question. That's your homework. With that, I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourself. Bye.